This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Flurries. Oh? Of the Mick variety. Haven't you people heard of washable mattress protectors? When I thought of the future Dippin' Dots meant, I thought flying cars, not this How are they getting one before Idaho Falls? Every good restaurant has wheels under it. In this economy? Well, <laughs> especially in this economy. IFAF, Idaho Falls Weekly Informal Infotainment with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Coming up on this episode, more about door-to-door salespeople coming to a home near you soon. Maybe even yours, you know, because it's summer and all. We, we assume. Our theory about why credit unions have enough money to uh, sponsor all these venues. Comedian podcaster Theo Vaughn has added another show. How much grandma is in a grandma McFlurry? Oh, no. Grandma got turned into a McFlurry. <laughs> <laughs> How much does a family of four living in Idaho need to live comfortably? Mm-hmm. And we review the Tata Towel. Here's one I bet the Generation Alphas haven't come up with yet. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You know that shitty, terrible Liberty Mutual jingle? Oh, yeah. Of course. Where they just say Liberty four times? Yes. Uh Uh-huh. And I get it. They're like probably fourth in the insurance wars after what? State Farm? Allstate. Like a good neighbor. Farmers, dun 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 dun. dun. Mm-hmm. Gecko, say fifteen percent. Yeah, the gecko. Well, and honestly, that little gecko, you know, he's suave. So, <laughs> you know, he could convince me to buy car insurance from him. So I get it. They had to do something. <laughs> well, let's just have repetition to enforce the jingle. Mm-hmm. I hate that jingle. Right. I hate it so much. I'm talking about it. Yeah. Usually, when I loathe something. <laughs> I just don't give it any attention or energy. Right, right. Kind of like, um, have you ever heard this thing about poltergeists where if you acknowledge them, they, they can become more powerful and like mess with more stuff? Oh, I bet. Yeah. Yeah, you so, feed into their energy. Right. Yeah. So you're taking the logical approach of not giving the poltergeist any more energy. Usually. Yeah. But this time you're letting it open cabinets and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Just slam them open, throw a few plates. Because I'm angry. <laughs> I'm so angry that I have, in my head, this lives rent-free in my head and I'm angry about it. Oh, wow. I'm so angry that as I was driving down the road the other day, heard one of those commercials, turned off the radio, half an hour goes by. Mm -hmm. You know what happens to me when a tune gets stuck in my head. Oh, I know. Massive hyperfixation. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. In fact, uh, before I get to the point, Eric Wenstrom of the Teton Chamber Orchestra, who will be back in town on July 4th to do the little um, symphony before the fireworks. Oh, yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Haven't talked to the guy in two years. Messages me out of the blue with the tune, but completely the wrong lyrics. Oh, uh uh-huh. And I said, so I call him and get him to sing it again. Okay, thanks. Bye. That's how dudes are. It was 30 seconds. Right. Two years goes by. Uh Uh-huh. 30 seconds. Okay, bye. 30 minutes, I had it. It was Michael Penn, No Myth, a song from 1980. I was like, 80s or 90s? And he's like, I think it was 90s. It was released in 89, Mm -hmm. charted in 90. And I sent him the link and he's like, that's it. I love that so much. You know, and I've said before that you are basically my (laughs) human Shazam. Yeah. Now, there was one song you could not help me out with. Yeah? Do you yeah, remember what it was? I do. It was Have a Cigar by Pink Floyd, and that's why you couldn't help me. Oh, yeah. So, of course, when... So, first I ask you, because you're, like, in the same room as me, and I was like, do you remember what this riff is from? I know it's a Pink Floyd song. I can't remember which one, da 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 And you're like, no idea. So, I had to call up my mom instead. <laughs> and I bet she got oh, it. Oh, she had it in two seconds. Isn't yeah. her handle on TikTok Pink Floyd something? Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> she she loves... Pink. She has a dog named Floyd. Yes. A girl dog named yeah. Floyd. <laughs> she was so committed to the bit that she's like, I don't care the gender, this is going to be Floyd. <laughs> if it's 70s classic rock, probably not mm-hmm. for me. That's fair. That's but, fair. But a lot of other things. So what what happens is best I can describe, like I'll wake up with songs playing involuntarily in my head. Mm-hmm. Best I can describe it is after 30 years in radio, Right. I just, my mind involuntarily, without my permission, mm-hmm. these are intrusive thoughts we're talking about, will start to query databases right. in mm-hmm. my head. And go, this fits that. Right. Yeah. You make those little um, patterns. Yes. Yeah. Like, I mean, I will involuntarily create a mashup in my head between Vanilla Ice, Ice, Ice Baby, and CNC Music Factory, Everybody Dance Now, Uh where it goes, Ice, Ice Baby. 
everybody dance now. That's hot. Because they're both about 116 BPM, I believe. Don't don't quote me on that. Mm -hmm. So half an hour later, after hearing the lame, terrible Liberty Mutual (laughs) jingle, I start singing, skibbity, 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 skibbity. How dare you? (laughs) Man. If you listen to last episode, you know what skibbity is about. I I cannot let those two little boys that I help out with hear you sing that, because if I do, I will never... All day. Uh, every day. Every time I see them. Every five seconds. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that'd be the worst. <laughs> terrible, unwelcome, and intrusive. <laughs> you know, if only you could play an instrument, you'd probably be quite the composer. Yeah, can't. You know? No. Nope. Oh, you poor musically illiterate person. But I, but I do love those <laughs> videos. You've seen um, MJ, Michael Jackson. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, basically talk to an entire orchestra what he wants to hear. Right. Uh-huh. Or band. Mm-hmm. And there was just a Bieber video like that, too, yes, where yeah. he had this tune and the tempo in his head, mm-hmm. and he dictated to the orchestra, and he played it. That would be ultimate power, wouldn't right, it? Right, right. Yeah. Well, and now with like all the computer programs, can't you basically do that on GarageBand? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Like I feel like that wouldn't be that hard, to, especially where you have mics uh, linked up to your computer. I feel like you can even like sing it and then like have that tune put into like drums and stuff. I think you could. I mean, if not with AI around now, like that has to be the next thing. Favorite account on the internet right now and has been for months. Mm -hmm. There I ruined it. (laughs) I love there. I ruined it. (laughs) So good. (laughs) Right. Like I may not know shit from Shinola, from Shinedown, from Shibuzi, but (laughs) (laughs) but he can combine all of those Mm -hmm. and make a song. In fact, have you heard Shibuzi's? tribute to Jay Kwan, Tipsy, the the bar song. It's just great. No, nope. no, you have no idea who these people are. <laughs> no idea. Yep. Sorry. It's, I'm... it's my jam today only. Yeah. Well, and I've got like granny music taste. So like, like my Spotify is mostly Frank Sinatra radio. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Ooh, we're going to get to grandma core. Ooh, I'm so excited about that. I just heard about it and it's like, okay, so like everyone's copying me now. And McDonald's is in on it. We'll explain coming up. I'm so excited about that, by the way. So hit that like and subscribe. Let the algorithm know this is your jam. Find us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. If you're listening, watch. If you're watching, uh, remember you can listen on the go, too. Can we just get to Grandma Core right now? Okay, yeah. (laughs) Okay. Because it's fun. So here's the thing. This is basically just my life already. (laughs) Like, I didn't really think it was any specific kind of core. I just was like, oh, nice traditional furniture that'll look good forever. That's also vintage and therefore a little cheaper because people don't want that anymore. They want that like mid-century modern stuff. I want the Ikea, use it for three years, throw it away. (sighs) I know, you sick bastard. And it's not real wood, so you can set drinks on it without (laughs) coasters and wipe it off three weeks later. Yeah, but you know, if you did like... I know. But real wood lasts so much longer. You buy it once, and then that is it for the rest of your life. I don't want to make a commitment. That's too big of a commitment to furniture for me. It's really not, because you can always sell it, you know, or just throw it out if you want to be a rat bastard. And it's heavy. Yeah. I don't want to do that to my movers. (laughs) Well, you know what? I take care of my movers. But that's why you buy movers. Yeah. You know? Like, you get movers because you have heavy stuff. You don't do that if you have, like, Ikea furniture. That's what you have best friends for. Right. You know? <laughs> I wouldn't want to do that to my friends either. That's not worth a case of beer. Well, that's... well, and that's pizza? The, Ikea furniture is worth friends. Right. If you have anything heavier than that and you ask your friends to do it, then you're a jerk. If your friends know you they're gonna and, and you're saying, can you help me move? They're going to say, no, I yeah. know what you have in your place. Right, right. Well, and to be fair, most of my real wood is actually... They're kind of small pieces, you know, like even my secretary desk isn't particularly big. Right. You know? It's okay. Yeah. I love that thing. So Grandma Core is an aesthetic on TikTok, especially with, mm-hmm. you know, what you knitting. Yeah. Sewing, cooking, baking, mm-hmm. that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, lots of like flowers and doilies and stuff like that. And I wonder if McDonald's is going to try to capitalize on that with their new shake, the Grandma McFlurry. Yeah, I heard about that. And I I genuinely, I kid you not, I almost went and got one as soon as I read it. Because I was like, that sounds amazing. (laughs) So you remember their Grimace shake last summer, right? I do. I didn't have one. Did you have one? I did. Yeah, mostly because I saw like a bunch of TikToks Uh about it, where they always ended in like a bunch of purple goo everywhere and people like lying in puddles (laughs) and dead and stuff. Okay. Um, Which... 
Oh, first off, it tastes like blueberry pie. It All was right. super nice and pleasant. It was rich, but it wasn't like terribly rich, you know? And I don't know. I didn't really get the TikToks very much. Like they made it seem like it was so terrible, but it was like quite delightful in my Th- opinion. Those generation alphas in their Dadaism and their surreal yeah. humor. Yeah. Kids these days. Anyway, the, <laughs> the Grandma McFlurry is a sweet new treat that mixes syrup, vanilla ice cream, and crunchy candy pieces. I've heard that it's Werther's. Which is, yeah, McDonald's jokes is like grandma's favorite treat that she hid in her purse. I love that. What's that got to be? <laughs> it has to be Werther's. It's got to be. Especially as Werther's rule. Werther's are the best hard candy. Uh, Ooh, outside of maybe root beer barrels. I do love a root beer barrel. Remember those Lifesavers um, cream ones? <gasps> the cream savers? Yeah, those were I good. literally have one in my purse right now. I but kid I'm, you not. I'm trying. Of course you do, grandma. <laughs> my dad used to carry those around in his pocket all the time and he'd especially make sure to load up before church Ah. so that he could keep me and Tyson quiet (laughs) during the service he would just like you know every maybe 15 minutes just pull another one out and pass it down shut your mouth (laughs) yeah have a cream (laughs) saver yeah we couldn't make noise if we were sucking on candy right yeah it was perfect brilliant yeah now every time I have a cream saver it reminds me of church so (laughs) I get really sleepy all of a sudden how did he unwrap them was he in ninja mode oh That's the beauty of it. You can just pop it from the bottom and they're actually pretty quiet. Oh. You just sort of grab the bottom and squeeze. It, it'll come up the, the top that would and be, it's pretty quiet. That'd be a great survey. If you can tell us in the comments what your, what's the go-to, what's the best church candy? Ooh. Actually, yeah. I would love to know what, what IFAF listeners think is the best church candy. The one that doesn't make too much noise. Uh-huh. The one that's not so obvious that you're chowing down. Right, right. I yeah. mean, I guess gum... But Gum isn't bad, but then people can see you count. chewing it. Right. And sometimes, have you ever had that accidental bubble you get? Right. You're trying to chew gum on the down low, uh-huh. and then it snaps on you and gives away your position. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. the monsters come out from under your bed. <laughs> now, I love gum. And the preacher I, looks at you. <laughs> yeah, right. They're like, you shouldn't be doing that in church. <laughs> well, and not only that, too, but you also have to have a candy that goes well with any sacrament. You know, especially depending on what church you're in. What pairs with wine and crackers? <laughs> yeah, right. I I would Maybe say little bits of cheese. You know what? I do think that cream savers would be okay because mm-hmm. they're fruity and creamy. Mm. So you know, it's like a little charcuterie once you have that wine and cracker. <laughs> and you know, I love a charcuterie. Church cooterie. <laughs> church cooterie. There we go. <laughs> or is that something else? <laughs> <laughs> now I was raised LDS, so we did water and um. Okay. We did water and bread. Water and wafers? No, no wafers, just bread. Oh. Yeah, they would like- they'd Leavened get, bread? No, normal, like bought it from the grocery store bread. Yeah. Oh, leaven. The, oh, the yeah, yeah. The whole point of- Sorry, you're be, right. I Thank thought. you. I was thinking unleavened, but you're right. It was leavened bread. Maybe I'm in a different Judeo-Christian world. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't really- I don't really get how they justified but, it either. Yeah, but right. They would do a blessing over it to make it- the right bread. I mean, so he did say, this is my bread and this is take and eat of it and stuff. This is my body. This is my body. This, yeah. this bread is my body. The body's the bread. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's get this bread. Yeah. But it was, it was always a treat when they had like potato bread instead of the regular white bread. You know, uh-huh. I love potato you love bread. potato bread. It's just good. So anyway, this new Grandma McFlurry, rumor <laughs> has it. Is butterscotch flavored. That sounds so good. Like a Werther's original. Gotta try it. Yeah. Well, and I mean, after that butterbeer in Universal, like, honestly, I've been kind of on a butterscotch kick. You know, now they have butterscotch dilly bars, and you know I love a dilly bar. Mm. Ooh, I would fight someone for a dilly bar. Butterscotch dilly bars for a minute. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, they used to, and then they discontinued discontinued them for a minute and then brought them back. Yeah, we might have to cut this if I'm wrong, but I think I'm right. They're scrump dillyicious. That's yes. all I know. I love dillies. They're so good. <laughs> we were just bitching about the price of McDonald's last episode, mm-hmm. and I've seen the graph. I believe McDonald's is the worst offender in the last 10 years when it comes to hiking up their prices. Really? And they Even used more... to be known for value. Yeah. Even more than Arctic Circle, though? I, I don't know if they... Arctic Circle is in a national yeah. or global well, to be fair, chain, Arctic Circle's think. always been a little bit expensive. Okay. You know, because they do seafood and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I went there the other day and I spent like 30 bucks on a <sighs> meal for two. Man. I did get like two sides. Ooh, including their mushrooms and white sauce. So good. And they stiffed <laughs> you on the white sauce, though. Yes. What, I know. What is hurts. even in the white sauce? I want to know. I want to know. You know what? We'll have to go get some... But this is corporate America, right? You push it and push and push the price until consumers say, you know, give you the bird. 
mm-hmm. is what I'm doing underneath the camera yeah, right now. Right. <laughs> the double bird. Yeah. Oh, I've, I've even heard of the triple bird. Let's see if I can remember how to do that. Hang oh, on. there you go. Is that it? I think that would be it. <laughs> yeah. Because you've got a finger on each side and that's really all that constitutes and, the bird. Right. You know? I think, hang on. And then you, oh, no, you got to do the middle. Yeah. And then, oh, no. Oh, nope. I still didn't do. Oh, oh that, that hurts. That's almost as hard to do as the um, live two. long and prosper. Oh, I thought you were, <laughs> I thought you were going to say the two <laughs> and the pink one and the sting. <laughs> <laughs> the shaka. <laughs> or the blood sign that we've yeah. attempted to do on the show before. But yeah, the one that we're too Idahoan to do. Yes, that one. <laughs> Speaking of Idaho, can you guess how much it costs a family of four, a uh, mom and a dad, Mm-hmm. Or two primary breadwinners, both working, by the way, mm-hmm. uh, and two kids. Well, okay. So I've heard that statistic before where like money doesn't buy happiness, but apparently like if you get to 75000 a year, that's supposed to be like the peak amount of happiness that you can get from money before after that it stays neutral or even declines. Right. There's a point of diminishing return after $75,000 right. a year. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I would assume... That would be about there. Maybe with the rising house prices, I'd say like a hundred thousand. And you remember the CEO in Seattle that started just paying his entire staff seventy five thousand dollars a year, and that right. was I, I want to say ten or more years ago. Well, you know though. Okay, I was actually just thinking about this today. Um, I lived in a two bedroom apartment. I want to say only like five or six years ago. That was only six hundred bucks, uh-huh. and it was a nice apartment. You know, really big, had a patio, pet friendly, all that stuff. Uh, and now for something similar to that, you're looking at like probably 12 or 1400. Oh yeah. You know, it's been astronomical. Mm -hmm. I hear that apartment rent has actually gone down this year a little Uh bit just because of all the apartments that are springing up. You've seen them. We passed the corner of, uh, 49th and St. Clair the other day. Right. Yeah. Oh, on the way to the monster trucks, which Uh we'll also talk about, but, um, the cost of living, for a family of four to be comfortable. Mm-hmm. And let's define that first real quick. Have you heard about the 50-30-20 rule? Oh, okay. So I don't know if it's a Dave Ramsey concept or but it but it's pretty common now. I know the 30 is housing, right? No, 50 well, yes, you should only be spending about 30% about 30% mm-hmm. of is it gross or net? One of those. I would think net. 28 to 33 gross or net, give mm-hmm. or take a little bit. On housing. Right. And that should also include like your utilities and stuff. Right. Which is, you know, but but the, but now with streaming, we're paying <laughs> just as much, if not more, mm-hmm. than we were paying for cable. Yeah. That's beside the point. The 50-30-20 rule is basically you spend 50% of your income on necessities. Okay. Which are food, clothing, shelter. Mm-hmm. And to that, I always add transportation climate. and communication. Okay. Well, yeah, I definitely had climate control. control under shelter. Right, right. You might hear, this is our first episode where the AC is running almost nonstop, by the way, to keep this uh, IFAF studio a comfy 69 degrees. Mm-hmm. Like we like <laughs> it. Like we we really seriously, nice. yeah, <laughs> not just because of that number and, and we're children, but because that's about what works and keeps us from mm-hmm. melting in here. Right. But um, the, the, uh, the 50% goes to necessities, mm-hmm. 30% goes to discretionary income. Okay. Where do you want to go eat tonight? Yeah, some fun. Do we want to go to Lagoon this summer? Mm-hmm. And 20% to savings. Right. So with that in mind, how much does a family of four living in Idaho need to live comfortably? The answer is $211,000 a year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And for just two kids, and most people around here have like four or seven. Yeah. Yeah. Yikes, man. That's significant. That's a yeah. that was a shocker to me. Speaking of shocker. Yeah, you want to know what the lowest is? Yeah. Mississippi. That makes sense. It does. Yeah. That's always been one of the poorest states in the entire union, anyway, with some of the worst schools too. Bummer. Um, and I think that theirs is one seventy eight. Okay. Yeah. I have a friend who loves the Instagram account of Cheap Old Houses. Right. I love that one too. And a lot of them are in the South. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would live in the South if I could buy a big, buy a nice antebellum mansion for, you know. Ooh, but then think of all the ghosts. Like, speaking of poltergeists, that's going to have some poltergeists. Putting your energy into the uh, (laughs) trans dimensional beings. Yeah. And then what's the highest? Uh, the highest yeah. is um, Massachusetts. Okay. At 301, I believe. Okay. So 
178 yeah. is the lowest. Mm-hmm. Idaho's 211. Massachusetts 301. Yeah. I guess. What's that? And I mean, Mass- Massachusetts being that high makes sense because that's where all of the politicians are. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's right next to D.C. Right. Of course, it's going to be that much. But it's very it's very Ivy League. It sort of makes you vacation in the Hamptons. I think it's very eye opening that that happens to be the most expensive state. And I think it tells you a little bit about where money is going, where maybe it shouldn't be going, but whatever. <laughs> okay. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, so kind of crazy. And, uh, you know, at least we're further down than that. But yeah, considering that Idaho has never been like a really big metropolitan area, I'm a little surprised by how close it is to places like, um, you know, California and stuff, which is still quite a bit more, but you know, Idaho, still. Idaho Falls used to be slightly famous for affordability. Right. And also not paying people very well. But sure, but you didn't have to because it was affordable. Now it seems like every other American town that's stressed out. Yeah, right. Well, and it's kind of funny because back when I was uh, in history class in high school, we were talking about the Great Depression and how Idaho actually did okay. Like they didn't really fall into as bad of a situation as most of the other states because they were relatively self-sufficient and stuff like that. You know, and that sort of happened at, it, during the Great Recession, too. Right. Like, it there did, was definitely some, but it wasn't terrible. It hit some people, like mm-hmm. on the East Coast, right in 08 when it happened. Mm-hmm. It didn't really hit us till 2010. Right. And even then, not as hard because of our mm-hmm. major employers in the area. Right. Uh, the, the INL. Mm-hmm. And, you know, how we're a lot agricultural around here. So, it's sort of weird to see Idaho falling into the same line as everyone else is when before we were sort of an exe- an exception. Yeah. So Yeah, I mean I know a lot of people live here because of the quality of life we used to be able to afford. Yeah. Yeah. And now that's changing a little bit. Unless you bought a home in 2012. In that case, good for you. Yeah, right. But this may be a good time to mention that my buddy Todd Wood at Idaho Falls Rescue Mission posted a list of immediate needs. Mhm. Listen to these and by the way, link in post if you feel like donating. Meat They need meat, beef, game, chicken, fish, Mm -hmm. coffee, chicken noodle soup, canned fruit, canned chili, canned corn, canned green beans, men's underwear, new and sealed, please. Mm -hmm. So if you are doing okay, I highly, that's one of my favorite charities, the Idaho Falls Rescue Mission. They do great work. They really do. You know, and back when I worked in uh, retail, I was manager of a little bit of a little shop and we would do this thing every year where we would um, match every pair of socks sold with a pair of socks donated. And that was the charity that I chose to send the donated socks to. Cool. Well, especially because I feel like men's shelters get kind of shafted a lot. I, know? I have actually heard that. Yeah. Yeah. Which sucks because they're people too and they also need help. But but, but yeah, like um, sometimes... Men in need don't play on the heartstrings as much as women and children. Right. It's just that way, you know, especially mm-hmm. like at Christmas. Yeah. You right. know, when you when you want to buy a Christmas gift to someone in need at Christmas, you want it to you be a kid's a... toy and not men's socks. Exactly. Yep. Here we go with the follow-ups. Last episode, one of the big questions was, do door-to-door salespeople have to get fingerprinted? Uh-huh. The answer is yes. Good. <laughs> I looked into this a little bit. In order to get a solic- solicitation permit, mm-hmm. you got a... You know, give them your info, get fingerprinted, huh. and pay for the badge, too. Uh-huh. So Do it's about 75 bucks to get a permit. I would say the missionaries count as solicitors, right? I don't know. Do religious organizations get the exemption? Huh. That's something I... They shouldn't. I, I don't think that counts. Yeah. Like, if you're, say, a realtor in a neighborhood, mm-hmm. and you want to go and introduce yourself to all your neighbors... Right. ...and also give them a card, does that count? I'm not sure that counts. Because you're not selling them anything right then and there. Right. Right. Hmm. I don't know. I think I, you... I, that probably doesn't count. I feel like the missionaries, though, that like that is something that you should need some kind of license for just because it'd be so easy for someone to impersonate them and then, you know, put someone else at danger. Right. You know? Right. Like, I'm just saying, if Ted Bundy decided to dress up as a missionary... You just need to go to Farrell's. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. It wouldn't be that hard. You know? Or, that, or that, that t-shirt that I wore a, right. few, a few episodes ago. <laughs> yeah. If you move quick, they won't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> but there are some other rules that I thought people ought to know about regarding door-to-door solicitors, door-to-door mm-hmm. salespeople. Um, they have to be wearing their permit. Okay. Good. Visibly. 
Really? Last episode, I think I said you can ask for it. Oh, okay. Certainly, if they're not wearing it, you can ask for it. Yeah. They have to only do it between 9 a.m. and 8 p.m. Mm. Not on a Sunday or any mm-hmm. legal holiday. Right. And they're not allowed to knock on the door that says no solicitation. Good. And that's why I got so mad at the cleaning guy that came to my place mm-hmm. because I had the, it, it was right there. Mm. They know the rules. They read them. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they have to take a test. Well, but that's true. <laughs> if you don't want any solicitors, you can put a no soliciting sign on your door or anywhere visible. I've seen them on a mm-hmm. stand outside the door. Right. And then, you know, you can also be funny about it. Mm-hmm. You know, we've, we found Jesus. We uh-huh. have an insurance company we like. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't need solar panels, whatever. Right. The one that I've seen that I love is no solicitation except tamale lady. Right. And that one's all caps. Right. And honestly, that is the sign I would have. Have you heard we're getting a new tamale restaurant in downtown Idaho Falls? Oh, really? Looks like it's called Tamales Inc. Oh. I don't know when they're opening. Okay. Honestly, Maybe though, genius. Yeah. Because you can't, like, there's not really an establishment you can go to to just get tamales, except for some grocery stores. And honestly, the ones are suck. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah. The, you know my, you uh, and I have mm-hmm. a mutual tamale lady. Yes. And she's amazing. Mary Jane. Yeah. And she, we've talked about how she uses, I think, white corn masa. Mm-hmm. So it's a little more, I don't know, palatable to the American, to the right. gringo <laughs> in me. Um, and then, but she stuffs it full of the protein. It's, she really it's not does. just mostly masa and a little, yeah, a little sliver of filling. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a lot, man. Man, I just, I really hope that they have rajas tamales because those okay. are my favorite. Basically, it's just peppers and cheese. Mm. Yeah, but oh, it's so good. Sounds delicious. It is delicious. Either way, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I would give them a try. Another follow up. Uh, why are credit unions buying all the venues? We've talked about the Mountain America Center, Mm -hmm. the MAC, as we call it, because we can, Mm -hmm. because we don't do promotions with them. I mean, I can do it here, (laughs) but not 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 at my radio Your program director will be up your butt. (laughs) Yeah, I'd I'd get in trouble. (laughs) Holt Arena is now the ICCU Arena. Civic Auditorium is now the Mm -hmm. Frontier Center for the Performing Arts. Let's bookmark that. Right. And of course, Hillcrest's Stadium is now the Westmark Credit Union Stadium. Mm Mm-hmm. So my big question was, are we giving the credit unions too much of our money? (laughs) Right. Listener Don sent a screenshot of Section 122 of the Federal Credit Union Act, which states, credit unions are exempt from all taxes, except for local real property and personal property taxes. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. So, yeah. Much like a religious organization, Hmm. they don't have to pay taxes. So they're flush with cash, and that's why they're sponsoring venues. Now, look. I'm not complaining because without their influx of cash, Mm -hmm. Hillcrest might not have a new stadium. That's true. And the Frontier Center for the Performing Arts might Mm -hmm. still be the Civic Auditorium and might not be getting, while we're bringing this up, take a look at these artist renderings Mm -hmm. of what the new facade and the new lobby of the Idaho Falls Civic Auditorium, no, (laughs) uh, of the Frontier Center for the performing arts will look like pretty cool, huh? It is pretty cool. So I've mentioned that my dad runs this place and he has a lot of opinions on it. Um, One thing that I think the designers of this should keep in mind, if any of them are listening, which I doubt, but I hope you are, is the person who's there every day has some really good insight that might help with your design in a way that you might not think of. Right. Like The person who has arranged and accommodated and mm-hmm. help produce like every show that's been there in the last 10? Oh. 20? Uh, at least 20. Um, years? More like 30. Might have some good feedback there. Yeah. 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 So the Civic Auditorium was built in 1952. Right. It's been 72 years. Mm-hmm. It's eight years younger than the water tower. <laughs> wow. Wild to think of. So it's time for an upgrade, and that's cool. Mm-hmm. My big question is, is it the Frontier Center for the Performing Arts or just Frontier Center for Performing Arts. Right. And you know how much I hate inconsistent branding, even with the word the mic? Yes. Yeah, it's what still important. What do you want people to call it? Everywhere. City of Idaho Falls website. Mm-hmm. 
and that's it because it's owned <laughs> by the city of Idaho Falls, right? But uh, Idaho Falls Arts Council, they all call mm-hmm. it the Civic, the Frontier, geez, there's the slip, the Frontier Center for the Performing Arts. Right. But I swear that they didn't have enough room on the sign. And so it says Frontier Center for Performing Arts. I know. Listen, people, call it the thing everywhere. Here's another example. Mm-hmm. You know the Eastern Idaho State Fair? Right. Uh-huh. You go to walk in the main gate of the Eastern Idaho State Fair. Mm-hmm. And what does the sign say? Yeah, doesn't it say East Idaho State Fair? It sure does. Yeah. And I don't know if they just couldn't afford those last three letters right. way back in the day and just haven't fixed it or if that's what it was called back in the day. Mm-hmm. Fix it. I wonder if so many Fix people Fix it. I wonder if so many people started calling it the Eastern <laughs> Idaho State Fair that they just rolled with it. Yeah, maybe. You know, instead of East Idaho State Fair. Think about it now. Think right. about the shape of Idaho. Yeah. <laughs> the L on my forehead. There is no Northeastern Idaho. Yeah. And I know it might not even be grammatically correct to say East Idaho, but then there was East and West Germany, right? Like it's it's just so much easier, I think, mm-hmm. to say East. I think they should go back to calling it the East Idaho State Fair, if indeed it was ever called that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could see that. Well, it's it's faster. It's easier. And, you know, I feel like... Just in general, it's going to fit on so many more branding opportunities than Eastern. Yeah. You know, like just getting the font right would be so much easier. So Uh, speaking of Blackfoot, did you know that they're repaving the road? And we don't know if this is going to happen in the next 90 days before the fair. But the city of Blackfoot received the Idaho Community Development Block Grant for downtown revitalization for $500,000. Oh, nice. Which will be used to bring North Broadway Street up to current standards. Oh, good. You know, the street in front of the fairgrounds Mm -hmm. that is the most popular street in Blackfoot for nine days out of the year. Right, right. So I don't know if they'll get that done during summer construction season. I wonder if they'll add some parking, too. That would be great. That would be so great. (laughs) Unless you're one of the people that live near the fairgrounds in Blackfoot Mm -hmm. and open up your lawn to the general public for 10 (sighs) bucks a pop. (laughs) I mean, it's a way to make money. Yeah. Well, and honestly, that's probably the only way that living that close to the fairgrounds would even be bearable. Is at least, you know, you're going to get a little payout from it. Tolerate people parking on your lawn, walking Mm -hmm. across your lawn, as long as you're getting a little bit of... Yeah. Scratch. Well, and that's the thing. You're you're already going to have to deal with way too many people, way too much traffic, yeah. all the noise, all the lights, all the BS around the fair. Oh, yeah. Till you know? like midnight. Right. Yeah. You're not getting any. So, I wonder. Yeah. So at the very least, you should, have, you should have the opportunity to capitalize on it. Right. You know? Oh, and while we're talking about other cities, Rexburg. Live in mm-hmm. Rexburg? Want to enjoy an adult beverage? Cafe Sabor is now serving beer and wine. Wow. That's so off-brand for anything in Rexburg ever. That's what we're hearing. (laughs) Well, they're also getting a Starbucks and a Dutch Bros. Wow. And a rumor apparently has been confirmed. The building behind the McDonald's on University will be a Chipotle. Oh. How are they getting one before Idaho Falls? I'm so angry. It's the college students. I guess. Yeah. And to be fair, like, since they're, you know, usually... Since their tuition is lower, they have a little bit more money to spend. Well, and <laughs> so and since um, Chipotle messed up so badly by bringing one to Pocatello, right, and then having it fail, like mm-hmm. I knew it would. Yeah, come to us for your market research information, like we've discussed before on this yeah. show. Yeah, we can tell you what'll work and what won't work here. Like the fact that they haven't changed the Sweeto <laughs> Burrito into a Chipotle by now is insane to come me. Come on. Yeah. yeah, what's it going to be? Another chicken restaurant, I guess. Yeah, which right. also, we don't need any more fried, chi- fried chicken places. Now, those are rumors about Rexburg. I, I haven't confirmed them. I haven't mm-hmm. called the city and asked to pull permits and stuff. <laughs> right. We just tell you what we've seen and heard. Yeah. Last follow-up, we talked last week about the Bonneville County Courthouse and the surprise mm-hmm. swastika that's there. Right. And I look closely closer at the picture, by the way. And yeah, what they've done is they, they've taken some of the tiles and painted over them in white. Right. But I think the high traffic one kind of just... It, it rubs off and there it is. Probably, yeah. Before swastikas were bad in 1921. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I, I didn't realize this, but the Bonneville County Courthouse had a big 100th celebration. Uh-huh. Saturday, the Idaho Falls Symphony was there and so were the Bonneville High School Ballroom Dance Team people. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. And there were light refreshments. So even though it was built in 21, it may not have been dedicated for another- A couple of years, yeah. Three years. That's pretty so. common, I think. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Happy 100th, Bonneville County Courthouse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and also, um, speaking of the courthouse, so you know how I got summoned for jury duty, and I finally got scheduled, and I was so excited. 
my trial got canceled. Oh. I was so bummed. <laughs> and like the the crummy thing too, the text so I got a text message for it too, which oh. is surreal, but also really handy and convenient and I do appreciate it. But it just seems weird to get such official information from a text message. Yeah. Um but it even said like, "Oh, your trial's been canceled. Also your term is over. Have a nice day." Basically, and I was like, Man, somebody, I don't even have a chance. I think you're the only person I know who would want to go do that. I want to do it so bad. Yeah. I feel like it'd be just a really interesting experience. And you know how much I love true crime. Mm -hmm. I think it would give me a lot more insight to like, you know, some of the trial aspects of true crime stuff. Because I feel like there are lots of times when you sort of question like, how did that happen? For example, OJ. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. And I kind of want to know, like, how because, does that happen? It's because Johnny Cochran could write a quick, witty, pithy poem. Yeah. If, honestly. If the, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Mm -hmm. Because if it rhymes, that gets stuck in people's heads. It does. Yeah. It does. I want to tell you about our friends at Virgin River Land and Cattle Company. You want to experience locally raised, locally butchered beef and know that that ground beef is one cow like we talked about last episode. Right. How nice is that? Yeah. Yeah. And starting this year in 2024, you can actually buy in smaller orders by the pound. Right. Roasts, ground beef, or steaks in various cuts. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't exclusively get our beef from Virgin Riverland and Cattle Company. We're not that spoiled Yet. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> but when it's a Virgin River night, we know it. Like, mm -hmm. like sometimes we'll go to, I don't know, Sam's, Winco. Yeah, uh, Brolum's, wherever we got to go. It, usually it's when we're in a pinch and we've already worked through all of the Virgin River. Whenever the person who didn't cook looks at the cook and says, is this what I think it is? Oh, yeah. It's always Virgin River. Virgin River proudly ships to five states, Idaho, Utah, Montana, Oregon, Wyoming, and Nevada. Ooh, so we're part of an exclusive club. Yeah, find them on Facebook and drop the promo code IFAF to save 15%. And are you in charge of planning a wedding or an event this summer and you're panicking now because it's almost too late to put it all together? Weddings sneak up on you. You always think that you're going to have all this time to put all this stuff together and you'll have all this time to go out and buy each individual piece and pick everything out. And no, you never do. Yeah, even if you have the perfect Pinterest board with all your ideas on mm -hmm. it that you've been working on maybe for years, mm -hmm. when it comes to the last minute, you do have some friends that can help you out. Autumn at DIY Wedding and Event Rentals. Not to mention that adorable drink trailer that, that they've got. Great for any event. And it's just so handy to have everything all in one place. You can fill it with whatever you want. DIY wedding and event rentals will turn your dream event into a dazzling reality. Call or text 208-403-2040 today. 208-403-2040 today. Items are renting fast for the summer. Use promo code IFAF and save 15%. Yeah, I went to the farmer's market on Saturday, too, and it was packed, you know, and I just sort of assumed it was because of the farmer's market. But then, of course, you reminded me of all the other stuff going on, like the courthouse thing, the circus that was in town, apparently, too. Yeah, as I understand, a lot of traffic. So much. A lot it was of people. impossible to find parking, which sucked so bad. I felt like I got there pretty early. At least by my standards, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I got there at like 1130 ish, something okay. like that, which I thought was pretty good. But even despite that, all of the stuff that I wanted was already sold out. <sighs> I was so bummed. Yeah. You've been trying to still didn't get quail eggs. Still, still didn't get. I wanted goat's milk. Goat's too. milk. Mm -hmm. And that Chevra you love so much. Yeah. And my dill Chevra. I mm. know. I was so bummed. It is but delicious. Yeah, it's so good. But I did get a dill butter this time, which I'm really excited to try. Okay. I still haven't yet. And you got to see your friends at, what's the name of the place? Oh, Sabor de Corazon. Okay. It's the flavor of the heart. Okay. Yeah. So cool thing is these are, these are the same folks that own Calacas, the little- um, Been there a couple yeah, the times. Yeah, the little grill and bar over- on it's, the North Gate Mile. For you Idaho Falls natives, it's the old sneakers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hasn't been sneakers or I think sneakers it was, too in years. I think it was sports bar. It, it was like called the sports bar for a second okay. too. Yeah, yeah. It's been all kinds of it's But Kalakas kinds is of stuff. great. And they've stuck around for a while too. Uh -huh. Yeah. And their food has been top notch since they opened. But man, on that food truck, again, every good restaurant has wheels under it. <laughs> like, I don't know. Because I'm pretty sure it's the exact same food, whether you go in there or or go into the taco truck, yeah. but it's just better on the taco truck, man, yeah. you know? But yeah, super delicious. If you have a chance, you should absolutely go in and try them out because, you know, it's always great to support local and it's good, authentic food. 
And a reminder, even though the Idaho Falls Farmer's Market has just started, you know, it's May through October. Mm -hmm. We're still in May. Remember, the um, Wednesday night Idaho Falls Farmer's Market will be in Ammon, June through August. Oh, which I'm so excited about. So, yeah, every Wednesday night, 5 to 9, right? Yeah, 5 to 9 mm -hmm. at McCowan Park in Ammon, June, July, and August. The one stand that, of course, did not disappoint me, because they never do, because they're the best, is Lark's Meadow Farms. Uh, our buddy Ken works there. Yes. He's such a sweetheart. Him and his kiddos. Um, and every single time, they have the best cheese. Uh, specifically, it's artisanal raw milk cheese, which I think is really cool. Okay. This time he had a Gouda, which Gouda is my you, favorite. You love that? I love a Gouda, and it was just creamy and delicious. I ate like half the block on my way home. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> it's sort of a long table. They've got bread on one end, bread mm -hmm. and cookies, mm -hmm. and then the cheese on the other, and they always have good samples too. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going mm -hmm. to try this one. Ooh, I, let me try this one. Mm, mm -hmm. How about this one? You know, they have this one pizza bread that is just so stinking good. Oh, where like when you yeah. when you cut into it, Dog. it's like cheese and and pepperoni and stuff. Oh my goodness. Like you don't even have to put anything on it. It's already good to go. Oh man. You know? That and some garlic butter. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> my personal favorite is their dill cottage cheese bread, just because I feel like it goes with everything, and I just love the dill in it. I'm a dill kind of gal, honestly, mm -hmm. yeah. but especially with that dill chevra, oh, that is a match made in heaven. You like your dill and your dilly bars. I do. It's true. <laughs> it's a big dill. It's, yeah! <laughs> One of these days, we're going to get into how Idaho Fallsians... <laughs> Sort of take the syllable and soften it down one. They do. Instead of saying sale, they say sell. Uh -huh. Instead of saying deal, they say dill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. Kind of funny. But anyway, I just love those guys. I wanted to give them a shout out because if you haven't been, you absolutely should. It's a big yellow tent that says artisanal bread and cheese. Again, that's uh, Lark's, Meadow, Lark's Meadow Farms. Oh, and a quick note. Theo Vaughn. Yes. Remember, he, he uh, booked a gig at the Mountain America Center on June 29th. Uh-huh. He's in Boise June 28th. Well, he's just added a second. I, this is how starved for entertainment Idaho Falls is. Uh-huh. Uh, he's added a second show June 27th now. Oh, wow. Tickets on sale, theovon.com, link in post. But yeah, that's I'm, I'm yeah. glad to see that because I think I talked positively about him a few episodes ago when uh -huh. we first mentioned this. You know, he's just, he's a funny dude. Mm -hmm. He's relatable. You know, he's got, mm -hmm. I, I, he might be trying to bring the mullet back a little bit. We'll see. <laughs> Who doesn't mind that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Man, even just the other day at that uh, Monster Truck Rally, I saw a couple of folks rocking the mullet, but I don't think they ever really went out of style for them. Right. Yeah. I just think it's cool that Idaho Falls and surrounding areas, of course, are of course. able to support not just one show at the Mountain America Center, uh, but two. Right, right. Sort of two. You mentioned your dad has been in the venue business for he decades uh -huh. in Idaho Falls, to his point. They should have made it bigger. They should have. Yep. I, you know, it's crazy to think, huh? That's that's so cool mm -hmm. that this big thing has come along and it's getting supported. Yeah, love seeing that. Always good to see. So speaking of the monster trucks, that was kind of a fun surprise. Yeah, right. I mean, I've been to a monster truck show a couple of times already, you know, and I feel like it's always got really good energy around it, which is fun. Um, this one I thought was really neat. I thought the kid that was only 10 years old yeah. performing was a really cool Insaniac? Guy. Yeah, the Is Insaniac. That, yeah. yeah. I loved the branding. There was Bigfoot uh -huh. and there was Rat Attack. Yes. And I'm trying to remember the others. Uh, controlled Chaos. Controlled Chaos. And the last one that I can never remember. Well, maybe he needs to work on his branding. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it was the last time I saw a monster truck show, I think was 20 years ago in the Delta Center when it was the Delta Center the first time. Right. So seeing it outdoors at Sandy Downs, even though... The wind that day, do you remember the wind last oh, Friday? Oh, the wind was terrible all day. It was Friday and Saturday. We went Friday night. Mm -hmm. I saw many a kite stuck in a tree that day. And I, R.I.P. to all those kites. I messaged Carly and I said, does going to a place called Sandy Downs where monster trucks are going to be kicking up the sand <laughs> in, you know, gale force winds, 60 mile an hour winds, I think we had, mm -hmm. sound like a good idea to you? And she's like, well, let's just go and see. Yeah. So yeah. we did. And the grandstand really sort of protected us mm -hmm. from well, that wind. And thankfully, it was like right at sunset, well, yeah, well, right before sunset down. when they started, uh, you know, started the show. So the, the wind had already died down a little. And honestly, I thought that in the grandstands where we were, it was the perfect amount of breeze. The, yeah, it was it was really nice. Mm -hmm. The grandstand yeah. was packed. And then they mm -hmm. had two other, I don't know, 
stands that they break out for large events. Right. Those were full too. It mm-hmm. was, and listen to this. We're, we'll play you a little clip. I will tell you in advance, the sound doesn't do it justice. Yeah, you could hear it thrumming in your chest. Yeah, there's no bass on this, but listen. So it was cool. The Monster Truck Insanity Tour is in their 10th year. Mm-hmm. Fun to see. Fun to get some Dippin' Dots. Yes. Who doesn't love a Dippin' Dot? <laughs> the ice cream of the future. <laughs> is it still? Because they came along in 1988. I know, right? And I think shortly thereafter, I had some Dippin' Dots. I think it was Lagoon. Oh, yeah. Where I had my first ones. Oh, that's where I had them, too. Okay. That was the only place you could get them back in the day. At least around these parts. Are Dippin' Dots still the ice cream of the future? I mean, I know that's still their mantra, but... (laughs) No one else is doing it. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. I I think it works. I felt very 2024 eating those. Yeah. I was like, man, in 1989, they were right about this. Uh (laughs) (laughs) Uh-huh. You know, I actually saw a really funny post the other day about Dippin' Dots and their slogan. It went something along the lines of, um, when I thought of the future Dippin' Dots meant... I thought flying cars, not this shit. (laughs) (laughs) True. Yeah. (laughs) Which I thought was funny. Dippin' Dots should be eaten in a flying taxi in Dubai. Right. I think so, too. Especially because then when you hit a little turbulence, those little frozen balls are so frozen that you've got a second to pick them all up before they (laughs) melt into the carpet. Yeah, the five-second rule (laughs) on Dippin' Dots. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I actually, I ended up dropping a couple Dippin' Dots on my shirt while we were there, and I was able to shake them off before they left a mark. So Except cool. for the one that got caught in my jacket. Oh, that one no. left a mark. Oh, no. <laughs> but that was it. <laughs> the Monster Truck Insanity Tour in their 10th year. You are IFAF this week. Chris Pie 5. 21 Finger Gun Salute. Pew, pew. And Chef's Kiss. To you. Monster Trucks. Trucks. For all the chest vibrating, ear ringing sound. Teeth rattling, <laughs> bone crushing. Isn't Bone Crusher one of them? Uh, not, not I think Bone one. Crusher was yeah. one of them. Anyway. I don't remember. I'm the worst. <laughs> there's another, if you like car noises, there's another one coming at, not Monster Trucks, but the All-American Throwdown Dirt Drag Racing Nationals. Ooh, I do love a drag race. Saturday, June 22nd, <laughs> 7 p.m. But usually a different kind of drag race. <laughs> 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 Kidding. <laughs> Spoons in their mouths and Easter eggs? Oh, no. I mean, like, drag queens. Yes, with spoons in their mouths and Easter eggs. Oh, okay. That's funny. I don't know why I pictured that kind of... Or a three-legged race. Tie their middle one together. Okay, that's actually a great idea. A potato sack race. Yes. Oh, my gosh. They could decorate the potato sacks, too. There there would be so many rhinestones. I don't know if I said Lincoln Post for the All-American Throwdown Dirt Drag Racing Nationals. Mm -hmm. We'll sell you the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. Or whatever. Right. So I don't know what to think of this next one. Maybe you can be the judge if you're watching instead of listening. This was posted on a Facebook group. It's a used mattress. Okay. Already not off to a great start. It's a gross looking used (laughs) twin mattress with not just one or two, but I would say several significant stains. Now, when you think of a stained mattress, what do you think of, Carly? I mean, there's only about three things that I usually think of. I mean, and that's usually pee, blood, or ejaculate. <laughs> ejaculate. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think of that one. Yeah. <laughs> usually, when I think of hotel rooms, I think of that. sure, sure, that too. Yeah, it does. It does tend to stay topical. But also, have you seen this trend of like young men who don't have bed frames or fitted sheets? That's just a mattress on the floor with like a flat pillow and a blanket that's too small for their whole body. In this economy, <laughs> well, especially in this economy. Right. Oh, yeah, geez, just, no, I have you not. know some young men out on the. Out on their own for the first time, they just, their standards are just so low for themselves. Well, yeah, I've seen the memes where it's like some dudes think this is okay, and it's right. it's a TV on cinder blocks. Yes. I mean, it was my that was my first apartment. Oh yeah, of course. You no, know? and then the guy gets a girlfriend, and he's like, "Y'all just live like this? Like this is so nice, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, right." I I would say it would behoove some men to allow themselves to become domesticated. Right, right, but guys. Yeah, like, it's okay to sit down to pee. <laughs> right, but like. 
like their girlfriend will bring over like a fitted sheet and like a full size comforter and they're like, oh, what sorcery is this? What have you done? <laughs> Did you not have a mother? <laughs> yes. And maybe you didn't. Maybe. Uh, and, and I know there are different socioeconomic levels even in Idaho Falls. But this, sure. this is posted in a for sale group and somebody listed it for a dollar, I think. Yeah. Which I think they just did it to, you know, get, attention. get it out of there. Yeah. Right. Well, the comments were hilarious. <laughs> you know, and I also, I really do understand putting a mattress up for sale just, you know, I, for I the don't. sake of. I don't. I think that's like um, donating used underwear. Yeah. I kind of get it. Mattresses are sort of different, Especially though. one with, I mean, Generally speaking, those stains on that mattress are probably pee. Probably bodily fluids of some kind. Especially from a twin mattress, like it's probably a kid's mattress that they totally wet the bed in. That was one of the comments. Yeah. Why does every mattress that has stains on it look like pee stains? <laughs> Reply: It's a kid's mattress. It is pee stains. Yeah. Right. Right. Another comment: You can't clean that. Reply: Not with that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. I think they're. If you're in a situation where you genuinely cannot afford a mattress and your only option is to, you know, get a used one, then there are things that could be done to the mattress that could make it serviceable. So yeah, I, I understand. I don't, I don't think you. I don't yeah. think you can clean that. Not with I, that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing. You also don't necessarily have to clean it. You just have to cover it. I just know I would struggle to throw away a usable mattress. So I understand the folks who posted it. Other comments. It needs a match. <laughs> Other comments. Haven't you people heard of washable mattress protectors? Ooh, Honestly, yeah, man, I, that's the way to go. And, you know, who got on a live on that? CSI <laughs> needs to talk to you. Looks like a decomposition stain. Oof. You know, when people die on a mattress, that there? happens. <laughs> uh-huh. It's true. It's true. Yikes. But my two favorite comments were, that's the good side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good point. <laughs> Yo, oh. Show me the other side. Right. <gasps> and then also tell us you want someone to haul this to the dump without telling <laughs> us you want someone to haul this to the dump. And I get it. I know, Carly, mm-hmm. you really are a resourceful human being and you like to, um, you'd rather donate something than throw it away. I would, yeah. I'm a terminated with extreme prejudice. It is no longer serving its purpose in my life. Well, and also, if you are someone who needs a mattress, you can actually apply to get a brand new one from the DI. Oh, oh can you? Yeah. I did not know It's still new that. in the packaging. Yes. You know, a lot of people don't know that, but they actually do have relatively, they have either cheap or free brand new furnishings. That's great. I so, mean, yeah, if, if you've got a mattress that looks like this, you, I wouldn't even donate it, honestly. No. I know there are some people in need, but I wouldn't. Yeah. Just, I wouldn't donate used underwear. Right. Used I socks. Get I get it. I mean, I think used socks are, depends on how bad the person before the, <laughs> who had them was. Right. Yeah. If they're yeah. high quality wool socks that right. you've, you know, fallen out of love with. Sure. Right. Yeah. But uh, internet, you did not disappoint on this one. <laughs> See, I love a good comment se- section. You know, people are so witty. <laughs> oh, man. And, and even in our own comment section, we've got some interesting ones this past week. We have a couple of them, yeah. I wonder if we'll get any comments on our very last segment. Oh, I'm excited for this one. Now, you actually found this and sent it to me because you saw a really interesting comment section. This Okay, yeah. <laughs> it, it looked like a joke. Yes. And then I read the comments and there's all sorts of ladies going, oh yeah, I love this thing. Yeah. So right. I sent it to you to do with as you pleased. <laughs> right, and right. And you actually purchased one. I did. We're talking about the Tata towel. Yeah. I mean, you were basically sending it to me to be like, okay, are they being sarcastic here or like is this actually a product that women use? Yeah. And here's the thing. I remember seeing the infomercials for this thing way back in the day. Oh, okay. And even then I thought, man, that sounds really <laughs> useful, you know? And here's the thing. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to do anything too crazy, but it just goes behind your head and then holds your, it's your one, bits in place. <laughs> it, it's one piece of cloth. Yeah. It's right. an over the shoulder boulder holder is what it is. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. Um, but yeah. So here's the thing. So I am a pretty heavy chested lady, 
post reduction, by the way. I have. We've observed that on the show before. <laughs> right. Okay. That's it's the thing a that pisses me off. Fact of your life. <laughs> so that's one thing that makes me so mad, though, because like I very specifically like I was hoping that I'd have just teeny little waspy ones when I was done, and there was only so much they could do. So they're still pretty full. <laughs> okay. You know. Um. But anyway, post reduction, I still have quite a bit going on there, and something like this is so handy. You know, when you get out of the shower, because gravity is a thing that exists and affects boobs. Uh, you know, unlike what every cartoon anime chick would tell you. Right. Okay, it does. And so, having something that can just wick away any moisture so that it doesn't get uncomfortable is just the best. Well, and especially this time of year, you you have not only yeah. you know the shower to dry off from, but mm -hmm. as you're moving around the house afterwards. Oh yeah, you get the swoob. You do. You absolutely From do. what I understand. Mm -hmm. You know, and here's the thing. I have definitely had days where it's been so hot in my house that I've wanted to wear just something like this. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. You know, like but this and a pair of undies. Like housework. Can you still <laughs> right. move around and yeah. stuff with that? Yes, you absolutely okay, can. Wow. It actually stays in place surprisingly well. Okay. You know, and if you're just around the house alone, you know, or, or, or if it's just you and your partner, then it doesn't really matter. <laughs> But, you know. And sorry, Larry, from YouTube. We don't have any shots of Carly uh, using it, but oh, we geez. have taken some shots. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, dude. We have taken some shots uh, straight from the Tata Tawa website. Right. Link and post. This is not a paid endorsement or anything. <laughs> we just think. I mean, Tata Tawa. If you want to talk to me. <laughs> and get pink, would you? Yeah. Why do they not have pink? You wanted it in soft, yeah, traditional my pink. color. Hold up your cup. Yeah, my like, cup. Yeah. Like that pink, or yeah. maybe your battery pack on your phone. <laughs> Just a note. You know, we only give notes to people we love. My headphone. All right. Everything I own is pink. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I mean, even your couch. Mm -hmm. It's an epic couch, by the it's way. It's a great couch. I love that couch. Well, that's our show. Help us out. Like and subscribe. Tell a friend. And we want to leave you with something that I try to get every year, and I kind of almost got it this year. Mm -hmm. There's some lovely alternating... Ultimately, in the summer, they look green and red. Right. Trees on Hit Road between 1st and CEI, mm -hmm. their northernmost parking lot, basically where you can turn to go into Walmart on mm -hmm. Hit, too. But some city planner in Idaho Falls years ago went, ooh, let's get ones that bloom white and pink. Mm -hmm. So for a brief, beautiful moment in the spring, it'll go about white, pink, white, pink, white, pink. Yeah, about a week. Mm -hmm. It should be about a week, but the thing is they don't bloom at the same time. Right. I think there's only like a day or two of overlap. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I got it on this day. You be the judge, but we'll leave you with this footage. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Enjoy your Memorial Day weekend coming up. Mm -hmm. And your Granny McFlurry. And we'll see you. Our next episode 45 is on Memorial Day. See you then.